proper wine for proper heroes. Maybe I'm not the most pleasant man, I'll admit it, but... It's always interesting when you're starting a new season, and you know the question always is, what do you start with? You either start with something small to kind of ease your way in, or you just start with something huge and get it over with, and you can put that behind you. In this case, we start with something really huge. Okay, everybody's dying out there, and action. That was your mistake. The one wolf alive, and the sheep are never safe. And I love that scene because you come into this and you're like, wait a second, Walter Frey's dead. How is this possible? What's going on? I was thrilled that they'd made a full head prosthetic, uh, which fitted my face, but I looked like David Bradley. As an actor, to really reveal yourself and, and take another face off your face rather than just pretend, that just made it a lot easier and a lot more fun, I guess. It's the actors just kind of pulling on their own skin, really. And then it's really done in cuts, where the, the arm movement and where you place the camera, having Walter Frey do that, and then having Arya repeat that, but from a different camera angle, that looks like something's come off, and it's very effective. What also it makes it extremely effective is Maisie's performance, because she just sells it so beautifully. And I love the moment when she turns to Walter's wife and says, When people ask you what happened here, Tell them the North remembers. I think it's a great opener for the season. I think it's a great reintroduction to Arya, where she's coming from and where she's heading. She realizes her power, and I guess, yeah, maybe there is the argument that you didn't have to kill the whole Frey army, but they weren't good news. <laughs> I don't think we'll miss them. I think, you know, starting with the Army of the Dead, basically, why that's really important is that this is the common enemy. This is like the bottom line. This is what everybody in the end is going to have to face. It's the enemy that is beyond all enemies. It's like the one thing that nobody really knows how to fight. And so the big question is, are these people going to get their act together? Are they going to figure out a way to fight the big enemy? Or are they going to just eat each other alive before that even happens? So the zombie giants this year, we've, we've got two returning cast. We've got um, Ian White and we've got Neil Fingleton, who was with us on season four. The similar makeups, but we have kind of interchangeable little bits and pieces, and we do a slightly different paint scheme. We can have different costume as well. So it's creating four different looks. So for the whites, this year we decided that we'd up our game a little bit and uh, we've re-sculpted an awful lot of the zombies, uh, their makeups. They're still very mix and match and generic because we have a huge amount of stunt guys, but we just thought we would um, change things up and improve some of the sculpts. It's been a huge production line, but it's something we were able to use a few existing moulds and then make a, a load of new stuff as well. Pretty song. I've never heard it before. It's a new one. Ed Sheeran's got the beautiful voice, and we knew he was a fan of the show, and we knew that Maisie was obsessed with him. Um, so we always thought it would be fun to try to get him into a Maisie scene at some point. I first got the scene, and I saw I was a Lancer soldier, and it was with Maisie. I just assumed we'd all get killed at the end. Action. I don't want to steal your food. You're not stealing, we're offering. Come on, it's going to be a cold night. Just a nice moment for her to really enjoy human company without lies and trickery. But I think the underlying line theme is that, uh, as in any war, um, the soldiers are just people and we are young boys. She really enjoys just hearing their stories and finding a bit of normality again. And I think she kind of realises that she can just kind of chill, let her guard down, have some food and crack some jokes. So why is a nice girl on our own heading to King's Landing? I'm going to kill the Queen. <laughs> and then to High Garden. Then you go to High Garden. What is this? It's what we've been waiting for our whole lives. Shooting that map room scene was it was a really big thing, and very extensive conversations with Lena and Nikolai about that. You afraid of me? Should I be? 
there's a great amount of need for revenge for her. Enemies to the south. It's like she needs to put everything to sleep that causes her pain. Enemies to the north. Um, she's now just on this very driven, focused path to world domination. And of course, we're introducing this whole new set, which is in this courtyard in the Red Keep, where there's a hand-painted map. Of course, you want to show this incredible thing. And also, it has great metaphorical value. There she is walking all over the known world when thinking about you know, ruling it. So you kind of want to do justice to that aspect of it as well. We thought that a, a painted map on the ground, that seemed like a good idea. Enemies everywhere were surrounded by traitors. We knew that Jim Staines, the graphic designer, would, would create something amazing, and he worked so hard on it. We wanted to have some allusion to the opening title sequence. And that just meant using some of the lettering, some of the imagery, and coming up with good colors, and then working it out basically on a computer. Then we had an image which we could print out, which was the right size. I had to do pseudo-medieval drawings of towns, lots of lettering, lots of conversation with the designer, especially. Then we had two guys come in, Dave Packard and Greg Winters, who came in to actually paint the image that I designed onto the floor. The man who is uh, firmly but politely dismissed at the beginning of the scene by Jamie Lannister is indeed Jim Staines, who designed and created the map to begin with. I don't think being down on his knees for quite so long was, was um, as much fun as he thought it would be, but uh, he, he did well. That, very nice. Love it. Okay, There is some fun to be had, I think, in seeing Sam in this new environment where, you know, he really came here to the kind of tower of knowledge to learn the secrets of the known and unknown world. And he's really just, you know, a cog in this machine. Sam has quite a miserable time. A man's <laughs> dreams not matching up to the reality. We don't lean on montage that often in the show, partly because montages, to do them right, take a lot of time and a lot of resources. Bernie came to us at one point and she said, we've got three and a half days scheduled for this montage, which is a long time to shoot what is maybe a two minute montage. You know, in the end when we cut the scene together, it was hilarious. <coughs> Going back to a place that created you and that was the beginning of you and the end of your family is kind of epic. Danny coming home was a really interesting sequence and I think what was really lovely was that doing it for Game of Thrones and doing a sequence like that, you can really do it properly. Like you can really take your time with it. You can really give it its due as a real moment. Because there's no dialogue, it puts more weight on Amelia, who's doing all of this with her face and, uh, and her actions and her movement. It puts a lot of weight on the art department because the place itself is really the, the other main character. The space has to be something that Daenerys feels very connected to, where everything that she's heard about is suddenly somehow in front of her. That was exciting to do, and the locations that we shot in, in Spain for it were absolutely stunningly beautiful. We had to find somewhere that had a certain weight and power to it. And when we arrived at Zumaya Beach, the geological formations there are so unique and so special and so interesting that they have a weight to them that I think none of us could ignore. Actually, quite often, we have to split location for the same scene. The end result was we decided that we could do most of what we wanted to do in two locations, split between Spain and Northern Ireland. The arrival um, is shot in Zamaya. You then get up onto the platform, go up a set of stairs, and then we're on stage here in Belfast. And then once she goes through those doors here, then you pick her up again in San Juan, where she goes up the steps to the castle. Those locations together informed for me the whole design of Dragonstone 
and it all came from the, those really unique rock formations, which are so, so special and very unique just to that part of the world. The Gates of Dragonstone. It's probably going to be on film for about 30 seconds, but so much detail and work went into this set. Two giant dragon heads were carved by our sculpting team with the most beautiful, big, massive doors that were designed and built here. The locations in Spain, you know, had that very strong rock formation, that very strong strated look. And we were able to bring in those beautiful geological formations in those side corridors. We had to use the rocks from the location. We sent out a team of plasterers to Spain. They took impressions of the stone. And from those, we created moulds and we used those rocky shapes to create the shapes of the corridors and the cave. There's that kind of physical, geological journey that we were able to design. And then that all culminated in the throne room where we had to create like a new architecture. It's a lot of work, it was very, very labour intensive. Yeah. No, I can do it without looking. Looks brilliant. It's going to be dramatic. Yeah, it's really dramatic. Yeah, the angles are fantastic. Dragonstone, of course, had been established in previous seasons um, before I came, so we had the Dragonstone map room. So it was already established as a cave-like space. So I wanted this set to sort of start in the cave and grow out of it. And then we were able to bring in those beautiful geological formations in that throne, you know, the, the Dragonstone throne, which I think is, you know, a really powerful sort of statement. The only directions we gave her was that it should be quite imposing and intimidating and that the, the throne would be carved out of the rock. And that was it. And like, that's all we gave her. And then she went to town with that. The first time we saw it all lit for a scene, that was pretty dramatic. As we were building it, people would walk through this set and they would feel, I feel very uncomfortable here. It's not a room where I want to spend a lot of time. So it was a new approach to an audience chamber, which was not welcoming people in. It was basically making people feel uneasy and intimidated. Yeah, I think it's maybe the best set that we've ever built. It was really impressive. We couldn't wait to shoot it. The audience chamber is incredible. One of the most staggering sets that I've had the privilege of being in. Every moment of that journey from the ship to the place where she's actually gonna stand and plan her conquest, there's a different flavor to each one of those moments. And you realize this place where she was born, there was a whole culture there, there's a whole world there, and you get a real taste of it and the uniqueness of it, and the coming home is really very dramatic. Shall we begin? <laughs> 